Hey everyone, in this tutorial we're going to learn about how to use the Reach Target tool to achieve precise interactive animation between two characters, a character in itself, as well as a character and another prop. In the first scenario we're going to look at how to get this dude into his car with accurate reaching of the hand. The interactive prop animation has already been applied, but you'll see in the initial animation that the hand doesn't exactly reach the door handle as accurately as it could. To resolve this, we're going to open up the Reach Target tool. Let's start by selecting the body part we want the prop to interact with, which in this case is the left hand. The first step is to select a target object, in this case we're just going to click the entire door to be quick. The hand will reach toward the pivot point of the door by default, but we obviously want to adjust this towards the door handle. So let's undo this for now and use the new Select Object and Keep Current Pose in order to maintain the current position while still having the Reach Target active. What we can do now is manually adjust the position of the hand using the Transform Gizmo, and you'll see the Reach Offset values change simultaneously. Looks good so far, but now we have to release the Reach Constraint at the appropriate time. I'll scrub down the timeline to the approximate place I want to release, and then simply click Release. You'll see a key appear in the main track where the release was activated, however the timing is still a little bit off. Let's open up the dedicated reach track in the timeline to refine things a bit. You'll see that we have triangle shaped keys, and a line which indicates how long the reach is active for that specific body part. When you click each key, you'll also see an extension ending with the rectangle shape, which indicates the transition duration of the reach. Because our issue is with the termination duration of the reach, what we can do is shorten that duration by clicking and dragging the final rectangle key closer to the triangle reach end key. What this will do is cut short the duration of the transition from the end of the reach back to the original motion. Once we do that, you'll see that the hand no longer goes to the door as the reach terminates quicker. Let's repeat the process with this next scenario, where the hands are floating above the steering wheel. Again, we're using the option to retain the current pose, and this time adjusting both hands to the steering wheel. One thing to notice with this particular reach scenario is that rotation is enabled in the reach mode section. What this does is ensure that the rotation result remains consistent when the prop itself is rotated. You'll see that when we rotate the wheel, that the hands will follow along according to the pivot point, which in this case is at the center of the wheel. There is also a position option, which is similar, and that it will maintain the position of the hand regardless of character movement. If we enable the position lock on the left hand here, you'll see that when I use the Edit Motion Layer tool to move the torso of the character backwards, that the position reach lock will override everything else, and the hand will maintain its position. In this next scenario, we're going to take a look at having a reach constraint active from one part of a character's body to another. In this animation, you can see the character holding his head, however his hands are breaking through the mesh of his hair. To resolve this, let's again open up the reach target tool at the frame before the hand mesh breaks through the hair, and use the same option to activate the reach but keep the current pose, and then choose the character's head as a target. After that, you'll see the character's head bone appear in the reach target field. You can click on the ellipse at the side of the field to see the character's entire bone hierarchy, and if you want, you can select specific bones from there as well. After repeating the same process for the other hand, we can then deactivate bone edit mode in order to see the hand mesh more clearly, and adjust the rotation and position of the hands to ensure the best accuracy. After that, we need to then find the frame near the end of the animation where we want to release the reach constraint. So let's repeat the process and release the constraints for both hands after they're meant to move away from the head. Again, you'll notice that the release of the reach constraint needs to be tweaked a bit so we can proceed to shorten the transition. There's still a bit of overlap though, so we can also move the end key for the constraint up a bit to tweak the timing. Once we do that, then we have a perfect release without any overlap between the hand and the hair meshes. In this final example, we'll take a look at how we can use a similar reach scenario, only this time between two characters. You can see in this example that the male character has a bit of a problem with his hover hands. They're not exactly reaching the mesh of the character. To avoid these floating hands, we'll again use the same reach for our male character's hands while maintaining the current pose, 
and this time selecting the relevant bones of the target character, which in this case are one of the spine bones as well as a thigh bone. After that quick fix, you'll see the hover hand issue is solved. That's about it for this tutorial guys, thanks so much for watching. We'll have more tutorials on how you can further stabilize your motions, so be sure to check out that on our YouTube channel. I'll see you in the next video.